Fire Protection District Board of Directors regular meeting Thursday, November 14, 2013 at 1800 hours. Director Fox, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Roll call to show all board members are present with the exception of Director Wesniski. Okay, any additions or deletions to the agenda? I do have one quick one, and that is I think we we'll probably fall under new business, but what I'd like to do is uh, just have a, at least a brief discussion on um, reporting back to the community um, based on having received approval on 4A. You know, um, this is what we said we would do, this is what we did or are doing, that sort of thing. So okay. I would just like to... Under new business, we'll discuss for it. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and just for your information, we'll go out of order a little bit tonight on the agenda uh, for the for our attorney's time for his next meeting. Do we need to reflect that in the record, Marie, or can you just... I'd go ahead and make a motion, okay. especially with the addition. Okay, a motion to move the public hearing up to the fifth position, followed by the legal update at the sixth position. So moved. Okay. And, and, and to add 4A. Oh, and to add 4A under new business. Okay. Okay. So moved. And seconded? Second. Okay. All those in favor? <laughs> I thought you heard me. I'm okay, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so soft spoken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that All right. right. <laughs> uh, we approve the agenda with those changes. Okay. Uh, that will actually take us then to the public hearing for the 2014 budget. Okay, uh, do you want me to go ahead and explain the budget again? Uh, I'll try to keep it more brief than last okay. time, and then we can uh, take a public comment. Okay, we'll do a brief on it, and then we'll check the public uh, question or comment. Okay, uh, so uh, to start with, uh, we're anticipating uh, a uh, fairly significant carryover going into next year. Um, primarily, uh, we we actually uh, ended up with an increase of $189,388 this year, uh, most of which was from uh, our uh, reimbursement from fighting wildfires outside the district. So we were able to uh, actually bank $145,992 for that, which uh, you know, continues to show uh, it's uh, it's benefit to the local taxpayers and helping to keep us funded. Um, so moving into this year, uh, we did have uh, you know our assessed value did fall from 179 million to 173 million in uh, Jefferson County and from uh, basically 20 million to 18 million in uh, on the Park County side. So the combined assessed values fell 4.1%. However, uh, as I, I think everybody's aware, uh, the ballot measure 4, 4A did uh, apparently pass. We're still waiting on the, uh, the um, certification of the election, which should come in the next uh, few days, uh, and then that will be uh, official. Um, so what we uh, end up with is uh, a total available property tax this year of uh, one million four hundred and twenty-two thousand and ninety-two dollars. If we assume a hundred percent collection, we'd earlier anticipated uh, because last year we only collected ninety-seven percent, so we were estimating that we were going to continue to be low. This year we're all currently over ninety-eight percent, so it looks like we're going to get really close to a hundred percent. And uh, we started to see some back taxes come in uh, from the taxes that were delinquent last year. So it's very likely that we will actually make uh, roughly 100% next year, which would be uh, which would be a good change. Um, and then we have uh, total refunds and abatements uh, in the in the amount of $8,825 and $955 uh, expected for um, for next year as well. Um, specific ownership taxes, once again, are anticipated. Uh, they've been falling for the last five years uh, straight, and um, I'm not really sure why that uh, that is, uh, but we are basically budgeting uh, for a slight decrease again going into next year. 
Um, donations, on the other hand, uh, we've had our best year in donations in, uh, in quite a few years this year with about uh, $12,000. Um, but in comparison, uh, previous years it was uh, closer to you know one to two thousand uh, dollars per year. So uh, rather than budgeting a uh, similar uh, you know uh, number as this year, we're going to go ahead and um, and uh, leave that at a, a budget figure of fifteen hundred. Um, inspection fees, uh, which includes uh, you know new construction uh, permits. Uh, has uh, not really turned around yet. We uh, have heard, uh, had, had a number of people who have called and, uh, you know, in, with interest in a building as we move ahead. Uh, but um, so far this year, uh, we've only collected $1,630. So going into next year, we're going to continue to keep that, uh, that number um, re relatively low until we start actually seeing. Uh, construction pickup in the in the area. Uh, one area we are expecting more funding for next year is um, the lease revenue, uh, primarily because we're now going to be uh, collecting leases from two other uh, agencies that are using the, our antennas up at uh, Conifer Mountain. So that's going to add a bit to our, our uh, overall revenue. And then um, in sale of surplus because of the passage of the uh, of the mill levy and our plans to go ahead and replace apparatus we are expecting that the older apparatus that uh, we'll be selling off will generate about ninety thousand dollars between you know, approximately uh, six apparatus that we're selling okay um, grants uh, one change from the earlier uh, section of the or the earlier draft is that uh, we had We've got a 2013 grant that we've started work on, but prim primarily that work is going to be done in 2014, and we'll actually get the funding for the grant as a reimbursement uh, after that's over. So while we had put it in the 2013 budget uh, on the preliminary budget for next year, we're going to we went ahead and moved that to next year's budget because that's when both the expenditures and the um, reimbursement will be made. Uh, another change, and a fairly significant one that we've made to the budget is uh, to take the uh, surf reimbursement, the wildfire funding, and move that to a special revenue fund rather than keep that in the general account. Uh, as you know, there was quite a bit of confusion over the last two years because that appears to uh, inflate both the revenues and the expenditures of the general fund. Uh, by moving that to a separate fund, we can then track more accurately what we're doing with our general fund as, as compared to what we planned, and maintain that as a as a uh, separate uh, account so that we can see you know how that uh, uh, program uh, benefits or or costs the district. Uh, so. In total, between um, all of the uh, revenue that uh, we've got available, that comes to uh, $2,172,191 with the uh, carryover funds. Okay. In uh, expenditures, um, uncollectible debt uh, is uh, still one of the uh, issues that we're, you know, we're dealing with, and that is, you know, right now, uh, what we're seeing is about 45 to 47 percent collection on ambulance billing. Uh, so uh, that's a, a fairly significant write-off in that. In the governance budget, the only major change from this year was the addition of uh, the $12,110, uh, which is our uh, estimate on the, <coughs> the cost for conducting the uh, director's elections in May. And uh, then also the removal of obviously the the cost for the ballot measure, the election expenses related to that. Okay, uh, in administration uh, we're basically flat. Uh, the only two changes from the earlier draft of the budget was that uh, uh, first um, one of the things that uh, uh, we're proposing doing with our personnel is that. Uh, We've uh, had uh, two health insurance uh, programs, our primary one and then a supplemental benefit uh, package that the district's had for a number of years. 
and that has been costing us roughly about twelve thousand dollars a year but uh, it's very rarely ever used by the employees so in discussing that with the employees what we're proposing doing is eliminating that and um, basically uh, you know figuring out the, the uh, um, additional that amount and adding it to the uh, wages for for each of those personnel uh, rather than to continue that program which is not um, really a, a, a significant benefit uh, to the employees. Uh, we did get our health insurance quotes for our primary health insurance and they came in at a better uh, price than we had expected so we've got a relatively low increase in that and when we take out the supplemental cost that actually drops our overall health insurance uh, costs uh, fairly significantly. So that'll be uh, a good saving uh, to the district. Um, let's see. We did include the uh, human resources uh, uh, funding for advertising for and, and uh, seeking a, a candidate for the deputy chief position. And so the net on that is basically about $28 cheaper next year than, than this year uh, for administration. So we actually are basically uh, flat in that. Uh, in emergency services, um, you know, uh, again, you know, one of the changes is the, uh, the health care costs. And uh, we've uh, looked, looked at a reduction there and added a little bit into the uh, wages in, in lieu of that. Um, let's see, and of course the, the medical examination program, uh, which is something we had proposed with the mill levy. So we will be uh, reinstituting uh, the program where we have all of our volunteers get physicals, uh, you know, prior to uh, putting them on, in service, and also, um, you know, on an ongoing basis, uh, you know, depending on their age, they would either have a physical every year if they're old like me or you know every third you know two or three years if they're younger uh, that uh, is something that our insurance carrier was uh, really pushing pretty strongly um, there was the likelihood that they would have uh, considered dropping us if we didn't institute that because obviously if we're not checking to make sure that people are physically uh, physically safe to do the job you know they they run a much higher risk of uh, you know, having to pay out uh, for an injury. Is there an NFPA standard on that? There is. That's uh, NFPA 1582, and uh, that's that's the standard we'll be using for our personnel. Um, let's see. The, again, one of the other things that we're uh, budgeting for is uh, dispatching uh, for Evergreen Fire. Uh, we have uh, been. Uh, we're trying to get the 911 authority to pick up the cost of that uh, change. However, uh, the advisory board unfortunately voted against it, um, uh, primarily because the, there are a majority of the board of the advisory board are uh, law enforcement dispatch uh, center directors, and they didn't. All of the fire dispatch center directors uh, voted in favor. The law enforcement dispatch centers that voted against it. Uh, so there's a good chance that that will not be funded and we will have to uh, fund that going into next year. Yeah, they, they can find uh, funding, you know, they, uh, they were putting $55,000 to change the, uh, the caller ID for one of the dispatch centers, $20,000 to buy a television set for a dispatch center, but they won't pick up the cost of uh, dispatching for the small departments in the mountains. It's, yeah. $20,000 $20, for television. And uh, how much for the, the, the table they want? 50000 for the table. <laughs> Is the Department of Defense? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Silver plated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> anyway. Okay, so uh, fire operations, the big change again is uh, uh, personal protective gear. Uh, we have uh, budgeted a total of $80,000 for um, personal protective gear between fire operations and wildland operations. And that essentially should outfit uh, basically all of our personnel with uh, new turnout gear. 
and we can then use all of that turnout gear to uh, outfit uh, new volunteers as they come on. Uh, currently, we, you know, as as you're aware, we have not, we basically don't have any uh, uh, stock of that at this time. So this is going to be a big, uh, uh, a big benefit for us in terms of being able to start recruiting additional volunteers moving forward. Um, Moving down to uh, EMS, there's basically um, no change in the EMS budget except that we are once again reinstating the immunization program, so immunizing our, uh, our EMTs for uh, um, influenza, for hepatitis, and whatever other uh, you know, required uh, immunizations are there. Uh, prevention and training, once again, um, we're proposing uh, including the deputy chief position that uh, would be funded 50% out of each of those two, uh, two categories. So we would have uh, basically one additional position who would be responsible for you know, half-time training and half-time prevention. Um, moving down to uh, maintenance, we actually see a very slight decrease in maintenance. Uh, basically, we're anticipating that as we uh, replace apparatus, uh, we should see some of our ongoing costs uh, decreased. Uh, it, and now, with that, though, we don't expect to see any significant savings in the first year because, once again, uh, when we order an apparatus, it, it's going to be six uh, months or more before they actually are delivered. So uh, hopefully, once we get the newer ones in place, there would be, should be at least a, a couple of years where any uh, repairs would be picked up by the manufacturer. So. Um, in facilities, uh, we did, um, we did uh, basically two things in there. One is uh, $7,500 to install. We've got a generator that's sitting out back of the station here. And uh, one of our stations, which is the one down in Aspen Park, does not have a generator. Uh, but we, that's not been installed primarily because we didn't have the funding to do it. So we've included that uh, 7500 to pay for the, the installation of the generator. And then we did uh, put a little bit back in to that budget to uh, be able to support um, uh, you know, ongoing maintenance. Uh, under capital, though, one of the things, jumping down a little bit, that uh, I did include in that is um, a proposal for $40,000 for basically a remodel of the upstairs of the old part of the station. Uh, if, if you've been up there, you'll know that uh, the carpet is uh, probably about five years past due. It's torn up and uh, you know, it's been around forever. Um, the windows up there are the original single pane windows from, I believe it was 1950s when they were put in. Uh, so obviously, you know, part of our extensive heating bills come from the fact that you know, we basically have single pane windows and several of them even have broken panes. and. So we're hoping to, to get that, uh, that work done. We may look at, uh, you know, that, that's a project that would see us uh, starting later in the year. And uh, between now and when we start, we're going to try to scope that out to see whether we want to just do, you know, those, those essential maintenance things or if we want to go ahead and uh, remodel quite a, quite a bit of the other issues up there, including the... Uh, you know, 50-year-old bathrooms and some of the other things that are long, long since overdue on, uh, on repairs. Uh, and again, um, apparatus, uh, we are uh, currently working on the, uh, the plan to uh, uh, prepare bids for the, uh, the apparatus that uh, we had proposed, and we anticipate that by the next meeting we should have uh, bids uh, prepared for the board to review to uh, make those purchases. So in the apparatus, uh, you know, capital apparatus, we're anticipating um, essentially the same proposal that we had, uh, had uh, uh, discussed at the uh, last month's board meeting. Okay. So in the end, uh, this does uh, fortunately leave us uh, a fairly significant reserve at the end of the year. Uh, you know, we had uh, fall, our reserves had fallen um, for about five years in a row uh, prior to this year. Uh, this will be the first time uh, 
you know, going into next year that we'll actually be restoring those reserves and getting them back up to a fairly healthy uh, level uh, for next year. Then once again we have uh, separated out the uh, wildland uh, uh, response fund and uh, that fund essentially, it, you know, when we budget anything in that it's a uh, it's really a pie in the sky budget because, you know, if next year it rains a lot and there's no need for us to help other agencies, uh, there won't be any revenue, there won't be any expenses. Uh, so every year is kind of a, you know, we'll, we'll tell you how the fire season is going to be when it's over. Uh, so we basically have just built that budget, um, you know, with, uh, you know, with 500000 uh, in revenue. And then uh, I took the basically the average percentages of, of what we spent out of what we were reimbursed uh, for this year and plugged that in for next year. But you know I've got to say ahead of time that you know that again that could be anything from zero to you know two hundred thousand or or you know it's it's really just just going to be whatever it is. Any questions? Really comprehensive. How comprehensive this is. It's terrific. I think the only thing is that we you do have in here the, the idea of leasing all the equipment at once. Yes. Right. right that's in other correct. words, instead of staggering things out, you're going to put things under under ten year lease, is that the right. story? That's correct. Uh, that way that will get discounts on, on the equipment. Right. And uh, but we can still going <coughs> forward we can still look at staggering out replacement times. Replacement times. Time. Yes, that's correct. So if we bought, you know, the uh, the five apparatus up front, you know, we will start start replacement ahead of you know, possibly like two years ahead of uh, you know, when their expected service yeah. life is and then do one every two years from there on out. Anything else from the board? Okay, any public comments or questions on the proposed budget? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing for the 2014 budget. Take us to the next item, uh, legal update. All right, thank you for accommodating my schedule. Um, uh, few things, um, and I'll try and run through them. Briefly, um, as you're aware, or may be aware, the um, uh, district attorney in Fort Jefferson County was um, approached and asked to investigate um, uh, some charges concerning the election. Um, there was, um, first of all, um, an allegation that the district had overspent its um, appropriation and um, um, that was uh, <clears throat> uh, not true, and um, um, the district did appropriate it. It's just the way in the 2012 budget um, that was done in 2011, uh, the way it was um, in that resolution of appropriation was not very clear. The way you did it last year, and I'm sure, and I'll be talking with the chief, but you did it last year, it's fine. You just appropriated a single number. You said it's the reserves and everything <clears throat> appropriated. It was after a comprehensive budget like this. So everybody knows what it's going for, but we appropriated. So for instance, when there was additional money brought in uh, for uh, wildland fires, that's part of what, and then you get that revenue, and that was part of what the question was. So uh, it was found not to, um, um, uh, be an issue by the district attorney. Uh, the district attorney did say that there might be uh, a technical violation. We have checked with um, DOLA and uh, they they do not think there is really a technical violation except for what I said about that they had the, the appropriation was broken into various categories and, and yet your spending was done um, as a loan and that's what the you know technical uh, uh, discussion was 
but Dola said it's it's not really a problem in the way you're doing it now. It really isn't a problem, so I think we're fine. Uh, and they thought so too. Dola did and the DA did. The other charge was that um, the DEO, which was Rhonda Davis in my office, had cut too much from the uh, 500 word, um, um, and we didn't even know this part of the investigation was going on. We were contacted on the first half, but I guess because it was us, they didn't contact it on the uh, second half, and uh, uh, that we had taken out on the uh, Tabor statements, uh, pro and con statements, that too much had been cut out of the con, and uh, they found that there was nothing really there, that there's very little guidance for DEOs other than what's in Tabor, and um, the reason for the cuts, which I reviewed and approved, um, were that one, they weren't relevant, and two, they uh, named um, specific things which you can't do in there. So, and we had we had to do that um, to the um, pro one as well. There were things that were edited out, so it was edited on both sides. And but so the DA found no wrongdoing there either. So it, and. The investigation was closed, was closed before the election um, uh, with a very thoughtful, lengthy letter by um, the investigator, I thought. so. Um, and, um, and as I said, we followed up on, uh, with, uh, with DOLA on the um, budgeting thing, just to make sure that what we advise is still, you know, appropriate and, and they agreed that there was. So, so the summary is both accusations <coughs> That's <coughs> what was found, yes. <coughs> um, the um, Dolan versus Cole case is, in fact, going to um, trial. I gave um, um, the two directors, uh, Schwartz and Rogers, a copy of the subpoena. I will accept, because you all advised that I could, um, service of those. This just came. In the email and, for, and then Len will be the third one that will be asked in most probability uh, to testify. I have specified that I want much smaller time frames. This is scheduled for four day trial. I'm not going to, you know, have you guys go down there and sit for four days. We will get um, uh, arrangements in a very tight. And um, I was talking to uh, uh, Ashley Barr about that, and she said that she didn't think that'd be a problem because this judge, unlike some, was very accommodating to witnesses and not having them sit out there for hours and hours while you wait. So um, we will let you know what the actual dates are, but it is scheduled to go on the 6th. Well, I think it's important to note, too, that this has nothing to do with the district or with the actions of us as directors. Correct. It's between two of a former employee and a former attorney. Correct. And, and that, in fact, um, both sides have signed an agreement um, waiving any rights, even if they thought they had any claims against the district, both sides have agreed not to bring any such claims. So the district is totally out of it, other than you know, some of you guys were involved with it, so you may have to give them. Um, <clears throat> the situation with the Powell Credit um, Corporation has been um, frustrating and to the nth degree. Um, good news is that um, um, finally, with in the form of cashier's checks uh, that Marie has, uh, we did collect sixteen thousand three hundred thirty-one dollars and sixty-four cents, which is um, uh, supposedly what they owed us since the last time they paid, and uh, uh, plus um, um, uh, in, in, in through September they always are thirty days behind, so they should be paying. October here fairly soon, um, and sixty dollars in bank charges because um, they provided us with several checks um, about um, more than a month ago, isn't it? more than a month ago, September twenty third. September twenty third. Thank you, um, and several of them bounced, and um, so uh, uh, and they were not providing us with the documentation we needed to check on. You know, fine. Give us the money. We want the money. But tell us what it. You know, what does it represent? So, um, uh, we actually met with the owner, president, who is um, uh, elderly gentleman that I've been told is in his 80s. Uh, he came up to my office. Marie came over, and uh, we met with him. And we just said, look, you know, this. 
I told them we've already drafted based on my discussion with Mr. Rogers, and uh, we uh, have already drafted a complaint against your company, and it was not going to be pleasant. And uh, he got it um, this afternoon. He went back down to his office. Uh, that was a, a one o'clock meeting, and uh, we've already received the paperwork we're looking for, at least part of it. And so I think they've got we've got their attention. Um, I would like to have um, perhaps one board member, the chief, and Marie. <clears throat> myself um, have a uh, committee to really just you know study and decide what our uh, policy is going to be on uh, collections um, you know you heard the chief say he's only collecting 45 is that what you said or you're right and and we've um, you know we we really need to look at it what's it cost exactly what he was saying you know what's it costing us and is it a positive or negative and, and what we're doing with our write-off policy, so I don't know, um, you, you know, wait, you don't have to decide that tonight, but sometime, you know, next month or early January, we really it'd be nice to have it in place for January if we could, and really have a policy, and and we have some alternatives now that we think to uh, that I would like the board to consider vis-a-vis -vis a Powell. So um, uh, it's it's been a it's just been a mess, let me just put it to you. But we did, I mean, we at least are now in a position that if there are shenanigans going on with this um, the paperwork, by the time Marie can untie it, um, uh, we should be able to know where we are with the accounts that you've given to them. Uh, the, act, the election, uh, Chief mentioned the canvases. Uh, we all got a call from Park County. Their numbers don't quite add up, so they are having to re-canvas their election, the whole county election, but it includes us. So um, the, the um, uh, number of votes cast somehow didn't add up to um, their uh, their checklist. So um, they're having to do a new canvas with a new board of canvassers. So that uh, is going to delay that, but they have deadlines, statutory deadlines, and they appear to be meeting them. We're going to have plenty of time. You've got, uh, your board meeting is on Thursday next month, uh, I think it's the 13th, and the 14th we have to, or do I have those dates? It's the 12th. Oh, the 12th or the 13th. That's Friday the 13th. Yeah, Friday the 13th. Right. Um, so, um, you know, we'll, we'll pass the budget on the 12th with resolutions and whatnot. And then on the 13th, um, they can now take all that stuff by email, and Chief or Murray or somebody can just zip it over to the two counties and, and make sure that they have it in plenty of time. Um, the 15th is the deadline it has to be in, and there's no extension to that to like the Monday or anything. So we do have to get it in on Friday. So, um, And um, uh, the Chief didn't mention, but I know he's doing it because we already um, talked about it is uh, we have to make sure that the um, county, once they, the canvassers tell us that we actually um, did have an election and did win it, um, then they we have to get it to all the, the treasurers, the assessor, and to the um, um, clerk and recorder so everybody knows what's going on so he can, um, when he does his budget, um, he can actually, um, you know, have the treasurer be making the the necessary moves to make that collection for the higher money. So, and I know he's working on that, but you just need to know that that's coming on. And um, and then the only other thing is the budget. Um, and as you all said, uh, I think it's very thorough. I think um, importantly, um, you know, you're seeing, you, and this is this is extensive. When you see it next, it only have three columns. It'll we'll have last year. We'll have estimated for this year, and we'll have next year, and because that's the format that they have to have. But this has got a lot more detail to it. You can see how your um, revenues, beginning revenues, ending revenues have gone over the years. What's going on? You know how the cash flow is going to go, and and that's what, as a board, you know, to avoid problems and things like that. Yes, you sign the checks. Yes, you kind of have an overview. Marie does some of it, the chief does some of it. This is 
to me, as a board member, would be the best tool I have to make sure things are in the right direction. And then from time to time, pull it out of your back pocket during the year and go, so how are we doing on some of this stuff? You know, why is the legal budget over? You know, or whatever. And uh, so you you got to uh, um, you got to look at those things and and, uh, and do it. And, and so when you do get a tool like this, I, I just because we pass it next uh, month, I wouldn't get rid of it. I think this is a real, real good one. So, and that's it. All right. And I think I can speak for the rest of the board in directing you to go after Apollo. I mean, we're Professionals on this board aren't going to tolerate criminal or, or unethical. We've got responsibility to the taxpayers. I appreciate them having trust in the way the department and the district is being run now, and uh, that's money well spent because uh, they're not going to tolerate. Thank you very much, and, and um, you know I don't. Hopefully, well, that's why I want that committee to meet. So I would like you know. Right. The, uh, and we don't want like what happened down the canyon. No, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, the transparency that we used in the election and the way we're trying to operate ties right into that, so I appreciate that. Yep, no problem. Okay. All right, that's all I got, unless you need. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. 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 Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, well, happy Thanksgiving, y'all. And uh, Thanksgiving. We'll I will probably be here next month just because we're going to vote. Okay. Um, okay. okay. So, all right, okay. Be good. Thank you. Yep. And who knows, maybe I can tell you that the case is settled for jail. Maybe I can. Uh, okay. Um, all right. Uh, getting back to the agenda then. Uh, review the October 10th, uh, 2013 minutes. Move to approve. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, financial matters. Alex? Um, we have the usual financial report attached to the packet. Um, I'm going to move the approval of uh, the expenditure of $95,826 for October 2013. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carries. Uh, and of course, attached to this is uh, the detailed uh, income statement. And I gather that we're in good shape now in terms of all these categories. Everything's pretty straightforward. There's all always right. a little tweaking, but it's, huh? there, there's always a little tweaking. But well, okay. but, but basically, that's the story. Mm -hmm. right. and, and, and with the new category. Okay, that's all I have. Okay, any questions? Okay, Chief. Okay, uh, in um, last month we uh, had 74 calls total, uh, so it was down quite a bit from uh, the previous month. And uh, once again, no fire loss, uh, only one fire during the month, which was a cooking fire. Uh, so relatively quiet on the fire uh, side of things. Uh, 39 EMS calls, of which uh, we ended up with 32 transports, which is a little bit higher than uh, it has been uh, percentage-wise over the past few uh, the past few uh, months. The um, we had an average turnout per call of uh, six personnel, and uh, response time uh, remained relatively uh, static at uh, nine minutes and fifteen seconds on average. Um, training uh, we did have the firefighter two training program that uh, was funded under the, the grant program. And we are uh, finished with the training portion of that, uh, but the personnel still have to complete their uh, state certification test. Uh, we are uh, planning to begin the uh, grant funded driver operator class in January, and then the EMT class will begin uh, in February. We are going to also try to open that EMT class up to members of the community who are interested in attending it. It is, uh, while it's uh, something that we plan to conduct here, it is going to be conducted by Health One, which is uh, Swedish Medical Center, and they'll be putting it on. And uh, so if there are members of the public who are interested in, in uh, taking that class, it would be open as well. Will there be a charge to the public? 
Uh, yeah, for the public, there would be um, the um, approximately a uh, lot. Yeah. <laughs> it's expensive, unfortunately. Uh, it's about uh, twelve hundred dollars, I believe, and that's uh, because uh, the, all of the EMS programs run through the community college, so you have to pay the credit for. Yeah. Exactly. But even so, it could be more convenient. It'll be much more convenient, and yeah. that's why we're trying to conduct it up here. Mm -hmm. uh, the the proposal is to have uh, a hybrid class, so uh, people will be able to attend. It's basically going to be web-based lectures that they'll be able to do uh, from their home, and then one day a week they come in here and uh, do their their hands-on training. Uh, so it'll be a, a relatively flexible and easy program compared to typically going down to driving all the way to Englewood two evenings and a Saturday every week for, for weeks on end. Yeah. So it, uh, it's going to have that, that benefit. And again, uh, we are going to be funding our own personnel for attending that. And there also is the possibility if, per, if members of the public were interested in taking that class in order to become volunteers with us, you know, we could take them on and, and fund the training. Uh, in, in agreement that they would stay on it as volunteers afterward. So uh, that's that's certainly something we're going to try to uh, try to encourage. Once again, bringing in more volunteers to the department. Um, obviously, m most of the last couple of months has been uh, wrapped up with uh, the issues related to the uh, levy and uh, informing the public and. Uh, being um, kind of getting plans together for uh, that uh, program. Uh, now that we have, uh, you know, had that uh, levy passed, um, we are starting to uh, implement a number of the, the uh, programs that we had uh, uh, stated where we're going to. Obviously, um, you know, purchasing PPE and recruiting volunteers is a, is a big part of that. And our plan with that, again, is to hopefully recruit for EMT class early in the year and also to try to recruit uh, lateral volunteers, so volunteers that either have current EMT or fire training that would not need to go through the entire academy. And we would put them through basically a, a, a mini academy, just a, a, a one weekend program, uh, it, you know, so that they can learn our, our procedures and our equipment. And we're hoping to do that uh, around March. Uh, then in the fall, we'll be campaigning uh, extensively for the uh, Recruit Academy for, uh, to begin in January of uh, uh, 2015. Um, the uh, the uh, apparatus are obviously a, a big part of what we've got uh, that we're working on. We have uh, our apparatus committee has been meeting um, either once or twice a week. Uh, or pieces or parts of it. Uh, we're meeting again tomorrow. Uh, our plan is to have uh, specifications for those apparatus out and bids received back in time for the December meeting so that we can then award those bids and uh, order the apparatus before the end of uh, December. Once again, we're looking to take advantage of um, you know, end of the year pricing essentially before prices go up at the beginning of the year and to then finance those apparatus over the over the life of the uh, of the mill levy, which will is we, the 10-year period. Will we have the financing squared away by that time, too? The uh, chances are very good that we will end up financing through the manufacturer. Uh, the large manufacturers, um, you know, the ones that aren't building two trucks in their garage and selling it to you, the, you know, the, the handful of manufacturers that do the majority of the fire engine you know, construction in the country have in-house financing programs, just like car dealerships do. Are they just as good or better than you could get outside? The uh, quote that we got uh, initially was 3.2% financing over 10 years, uh, which is uh, very good. Um, they, they are taking advantage of the same, um, the same program that the banks are, which is that any financing that they do to us is tax exempt. So they essentially reduce their, uh, their tax burden of their company by financing the very fire apparatus they sell. 
So it's, it's to their benefit to be as competitive as anybody else out there. Uh, and um, we'll certainly ask for proposals from banks as well. But, um, you know, the last couple of times that I've done this, they have undersold the banks every time. Uh, because, obviously, you know, if they can, if they can cut their tax uh, costs, then, then it's, a, it's a big benefit for them. Um, the, uh, the other thing, obviously, is implementing the physical fitness program, which we plan to start in January. Uh, and the PPE, um, we're planning to actually order in December uh, with uh, an estimated January delivery time. And then finally, the last uh, you know, significant part of it that we're planning out at this point would be the, uh, the station remodel, which will obviously be uh, a little bit further out in, in the year. Thank you. Okay. Any old business from the court? I have not. See, now that will take us to new business. Uh, first, we'll do the 2012 pension letters. Okay, so you should have a list there of uh, all of the personnel that qualified for uh, credit as a good year for. Um, the uh, pension on the first page, and then on the second page are the personnel who did not qualify. Um, most of the personnel on the second page are um, people who left the department, um, although there are a few who simply didn't make their training or response requirements during the year. Um, I believe, is that required that, uh, that, that the names be read? Or? It has been traditionally done. I'm not sure if there's a specific requirement. Past meetings, it's been right into the record. Okay. I'll read in the names of the members with a good year for 2012. Pete Eigel, John Lauder, Scott Aronson, Kenny Schneider, Luca Fabry, Jim German, Linda Morrison, Ryan Tinky, Mark Becker, Scott Kane, Morgan Boldrin, Larry Hauser, Lauren Schlesser, Chris Moya, Jareth. Jareth Phelps, John Fleshman, Ryan Kessler, Nick Rodriguez, Tim Sander, Wendy Zeckman, Michael Davis, Kevin Devaney, Nick McKibben, Leo Melly, Heather Merzlach, Tyler Hayden, Carrie Kern, Andrew Mashburn, Justin Summers, Sheena Tamberlin, Vincent Van Binsbergen, <laughs> Cassandra Guy, John Hailstein, B. Hennington, Nels Larson, Evan Millick, Quisner, Patrick Quisner, Ellen Schneider, and Simon Young. Do you bad years too? Bad year, pension, Todd Wagner, Matt Shield, Ron McGinnis, Tim Biglin, Mitch Hartzler, Bill Fees, Brian Rowland, Melody Mesmer, Dax Julian, Mark Wesseldine, Jaden Mathis, Jamie Bellotti, Thylia Biglin, Jeff Zeckman, Chuck Rapp, David Haight, Logan Sadillo Scott. And motion to accept. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Anything else on that, Marie? No. We'll take us to our other new item business, and that is the 4A Mel Levy election. Would you like to start? Sure. I just think it's very important, in fact, even critical, that you know, with all of the craziness that's um, uh, been part of uh, the district, particularly many, many years ago, but still lingers a bit. I think it's a tremendous opportunity uh, for for this district to be sure to um, communicate very well and very clearly and very often what we're what we're doing. So basically, you know, this is what we said we would do. This is what we have done or are doing. Um, you know, and I'd just throw it out then. What's the best way for us to do that? Is that on our website? It is you know, what's what's a, what's a, the optimal way? I would really lean on you, Chief. But um, I think it's crucial that we do this. 
So I think the I think the newsletter. I assume we're going to continue a quarterly kind of newsletter. Absolutely, uh, we, we plan to continue the newsletter, and uh, and what I would like to do is yes, exactly that. Report on uh, on what uh, what the district is, is doing. Um, you know, in terms of the uh, you know mill levy uh, funds and, and and what we had. Uh, um, Proposed to do with those and what we're doing with it, and then obviously all of the other things that we do on a regular basis, uh, keeping the, keeping them informed on that as well as trying to educate the public on um, you know fire prevention or the other the other um, you know facets of, of our operation. Um, utilizing the website for that is also going to be um, very uh, you know very uh, essential, and you know we've been trying to increase our transparency to the public over the past two years by including our board meetings, uh, minutes, including the uh, budget uh, each uh, month, and, and I'd like to continue doing that, that as well. Is there, in that regard, at one point there was a proposal to redesign the website and put a new calendar up and all that stuff? Is that dead? Is that... Um, you know, uh, Jeff Sackman's been working on that, and uh, you know, he, he actually transitioned us over to the new website, and it was fantastic, except that our email crashed. Uh, so he moved it back, and he's been trying to figure out how to, ma how to make that work. And uh, I'll be honest with you, websites are way over my head. Um, I'm glad he's willing to work on that, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure the technical... That's all right. I, I just remember we were, we were talking about that we had some. Yeah, and, and the new website actually is fantastic. It's got all kinds of additional information. We just got to figure out how to launch it um, without, you know, losing all our email. Okay, thank you. When is the next uh, bugle uh, scheduled to go out? There? That would be January. Okay. So we should have quite a bit of news by then. That's that's my hope. That, that okay. Should be uh, great. Should be quite a bit in there. I would also suggest. I assume we can. Accommodate it that if necessary, uh, you might have a few issues that you expand beyond the four pages. I think that would be good. With an insert, you know, uh, some kind of a uh, special page for uh, department developments. Sure, sure. I, I think that would be good. Another thing that uh, that I wanted to work with the board on with that is also, uh, you know, obviously uh, there's a lot of concern, you know, when you look at. Um, you know the problems down at Inner Canyon. You know how are how do we make sure that we don't have uh, similar uh, you know problems in the future here? Um, and uh, I think that uh, you know I feel pretty confident that our current system uh, works pretty well. But we all need to make sure that the public knows what that is. You know and how many people have to look at every expenditure before it's approved, uh, as well as Making sure that that's in a very clear and uh, you know very enforceable policy, so that you know moving ahead, you know uh, we don't ever run into a situation where you know we can end up losing money because it was misappropriated. So you're planning to develop some kind of. Uh... We've got uh, we've got a draft financial policy that uh, we're we're working on, and for the most part, it's going to mirror what we're doing now. Uh, you know that I think that uh, you know right now every you know every expenditure goes first to Marie, you know, and then it comes to me for approval, and then at least two members of the board have to sign it, and then our accountant looks at it, and then the auditor looks at it. So it would uh, take a pretty major oversight to have six people look at something and and miss a misappropriation. So the system that we have is is very good right now. What we need to do is make sure that, that that's in writing and people can see exactly what it is and, and how that works. Okay. We'll be with the public in just a second, okay? Um, on 4A, also, I know the Level of Service Committee, um, when they decided to go forward with the mill, lived had a few key things they wanted to do, and that was be transparent, provide all the documents necessary keep a plan simple, tell them what it's going to cost and what they're going to get and how it's going to benefit them. I think 
hats off to the chief and the level of service committee, definitely friends of Elk Creek for for championing that cause and basically following all of those guidelines. Uh, the presentations you did at town halls and, and at, at uh, out in the community uh, kept it short and simple, uh, not confusing. Tell you what's tell them what's wrong, what it's going to cost, what they're going to get, and importantly when it's going to end. I think. Uh, the direction the level of service committee gave uh, was followed to the letter, and I believe that's a key part of why it was successful. So hats off to the chief for putting that together. Level of service committee all started there. You guys did a fine job, and our friends of Elk Creek um, couldn't say more about what they've done. And of course, staff and our our volunteers, our firefighters, uh, everybody was behind it. And most importantly, is the voting citizens to uh, pass a mill uh, in this day and age. Uh, at the high percentage that it was, uh, to me says we ran the campaign right, our, our spending plan, our organization plan of this district and the fire department is correct. Um, the transparency is there. Uh, I think everybody could see that. Uh, the message was clear and concise uh, and there was misleading information sent out and uh, put out and fortunately the voters were intelligent enough, forward thinking enough and obviously have confidence in the way this district and department is being run. So I believe hats off to everyone that had a key part in that and we'll be able to, to have uh, even better fire protection in this district. So I just want to thank everybody uh, personally as well as organizationally for everything they did to accomplish this and we'll all be better off in this district for it. So uh, thank you to everybody. Any other director want to comment on for you? Okay. All right, that'll take us to citizens. Do you have a comment or a question? Yes. I'm uh, Robert Sudin. I live on uh, Richmond Hill Road. And I've lived there for many years. Top of the hill there. I have one of arrogance and arrogance. But I was wondering, are you uh, looking for any assistance from the people of the uh, county? For instance, Many people are very uh, good at uh, uh, websites in our county. I think they would be able to help you very nicely. Okay. And also, we have a big uh, tank across my house. It's about a 1,500 gallon tank. I have no knowledge if that's got water in it or not. Okay. And so, I have uh, an ability, if it's about 500 feet from me, I can just we're all found they look see there's no water in there. Okay. Because we have fire we might be in trouble. Okay. Now the other thing is I think uh, amateur radio operators around this uh, county are known for helping and I would like to see uh, help from them. Okay. For instance, I am uh, experienced in uh, television and I could take an infrared uh, scan of a lot of the county because I'm top of the hill. Okay. And so things like that could be uh, done. All right. But I think uh, more help from the community would be everybody that's interested. Absolutely. Why don't, after the meeting, why don't you give the chief your address and uh, some contact info for you? And you can follow up on that tank. Okay. Well, another thing I'd like to see would be uh, uh, more effort along this line of uh, mitigation. Yeah, uh, so would we. <laughs> I think uh, they're saying we're not going to have as much mitigation now because they can't find a place to do it. I think that should be uh, definite yeah. because uh, the insurance companies now mm -hmm. are going to wipe out people. Yeah. And there's going to be some legislation at the, the session this year to deal with mitigation issues to give the uh, give the county and the, hopefully the fire district some authority to deal with some of those problems too. Well, there's a lot of imagination solutions yep. that could be in play. Okay. For instance, I'm uh, very heavily into uh, green uh, concepts because I'm sure it's real. Yeah. And I've been mitigating my property for a long time. I've been told I have a 
green flag. I don't see a green flag in front of my house. Okay. I think if we had a, a system that would say, look, this person would done it right, right. that would make a lot of difference. Right, and I think the chief has talked about before when the wildland groups get out there, they can tell what's who's done their mitigation and who hasn't. So, um, yeah, but I hear them talk about the flag concept too. So. I'm, I'm surrounded with people that have done nothing. Absolutely, understood. Yeah. Why should I do everything that's just going to come out of my property? Yep. So, I think we're going to see a lot of effort. Well, finally, but now there's no place we can take them. Uh, the fire department has been helping out in some of the collections. Uh, now we're getting two or three collections. Yep. That's kind of right. Yep. Okay. Well, why don't you get with the chief after the meeting and give him your information, okay? Okay. Anything else? Uh, this uh, communication system, the 911, version 911, that did not work. Is that being a uh, What is the county doing on that? Are they... um, the county did uh, switch to a different uh, program for um, the reverse 911 program, and uh, they have done some tests, and those were uh, certainly better than they were during the Lower North Fork fire, but um, I think uh, any one of those, we, we, we have to recognize that there's a number of limitations to it. Uh, the uh, they will certainly be a helpful tool, but they're they're never going to be a hundred percent, you know, accurate about who they call or you know or getting everybody uh, um, you know uh, called. So uh, it's a, it's a big improvement over where it was. It still comes down to individuals have to recognize you know if there's smoke or fire in your in your neighborhood, that should be a, a good indication of time to evacuate as well. Was it regularly uh, tried out? They they have been, they have to, uh, conducted some tests. Uh, Park County did one of the entire county, and uh, uh, Jefferson County did uh, portions of it. And then you know, we actually used it several times on on actual fires this last year, and it certainly did work better than it had uh, during the Lower North Fork fire. So things things are improved at least. Uh, I come from a small town in Michigan, and every night at 6 o'clock, they turn on a test iron. And that uh, uh, tested everything. That, uh, that, you, that, yeah, that was a great program when everybody lived in small towns. Uh, we'd have to have a lot of sirens to cover the <laughs> district. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think we have more fires. Yeah. Because right now, Australia's picking up in the uh, Philippines. That's going to happen. And uh, there's another factor coming around. Every 300 years, you have a cold cycle. And we may have a cold cycle coming up. Okay. All right, any other citizens' issues? I, I just want to know, maybe this is a no on tag, but how do you work with the insurance companies or do they even work with you? I mean, they put out different qualifications or how much you're going to be so-called ding for where you live, but if you upgrade your equipment, do you, is there any relationship between the, the two? There is. Um, the, uh, and obviously that's a, that's a big issue impacting everybody in the uh, community now. Uh, there are a couple of things that uh, we're doing to uh, kind of help that. One is that, uh, you know, obviously uh, the equipment and, and uh, um, the improvements that we're planning to make are going to help maintain our ISO rating, which is one of the factors that's used to determine uh, insurance rates. A uh, second one is the, the move as we move from being dispatched by Jefferson County Sheriff to Evergreen Fire, uh, that's actually going to allow us to get credit to uh, the border areas between the districts such as Shadow Mountain, uh, Pleasant Park, uh, you know, out uh, Pine Junction, and they'll actually get credit now for the neighboring fire department's capability as well as our own. 
uh, the, there obviously are some bigger picture issues uh, that are going on. Um, as uh, Director Rogers pointed out, uh, there has been uh, work at the state level with uh, the governor's task force and trying to come up with uh, proposals for how to uh, reduce the uh, risk and reduce the insurance cost in, in the uh, wildland urban interface. Um, unfortunately, uh, the, the recommendations that they uh, put together didn't really match up to what the legislative uh, priorities were, so not everything from that uh, proposal uh, was included or is planned to be included in the next legislative session. However, some parts of it are. Um, primarily, one of the big ones is that uh, they are going to continue to leave it at a local level, county level, to decide what the standards would be and uh, basically to uh, seek funding. One of the um, proposals that we should help quite a bit with encouraging mitigation is that uh, the previous uh, tax deduction for mitigation, which unfortunately a lot of folks don't even know exists, uh, is going to be converted to a tax credit. So essentially 50% of whatever you pay to have mitigation done on your property will be, you'll be able to write it off, um, you know, as a direct credit on uh, state income tax. So there are some things going on at the state level. At the county level as well, they're uh, working on trying to come up with uh, ways to uh, get rid of the slash, which would help encourage mitigation. Um, that's uh, still, we don't have a, uh, an answer to which way they're going to go with that. Uh, Commissioner Rozier has come up with a plan. Some of the uh, county, um, other county officials have come up with a plan. I don't know, you know how, the, how that's going to end up, but uh, it sounds like there's quite a bit of commitment to uh, try to um, get uh, additional mitigation, um, you know, slash collection opportunities in the community. Um, the in the end, though, uh, you know, the the insurance agents or the insurance companies still have quite a bit of latitude in how they decide on whether they're going to insure people and how much it's going to cost. And there's a, quite a bit of difference from one company to the next on what uh, factors they use there. Uh, the um, there is kind of a national consensus on what those standards should be, and quite a few of the companies do use those national standards. Uh, unfortunately, some of the other companies basically set their own criteria, and um, you know it, it doesn't necessarily match up with what we recommend with, and, and what the uh, you know the national fire community rec recommends. So, you know. Well, we're going we're gonna to take what steps we can. It's obviously a big issue, and hopefully uh, each of those pieces will, will help uh, kind of avert, uh, you know, the possibility of people losing their insurance or, or having significant increases. Thank you. Can you need your name for the record? Oh. We need your name for the public comment part of the record, if you don't mind. No, Mary Jane Suiting. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other citizens? Okay, seeing none, motion to adjourn. So moved. For a second. Second. Uh, 1912.